Can I please ask you to put your thumb up? Sorry. Thanks. Can you please move it? And can you now please close your eyes and move it again? It's easy, right? Well, for some people that had a stroke, for example, it's not an evident thing anymore to do. Because essentially, because of the way um, their brain has been damaged because of the stroke, the connection between their brain and their motor skills has been damaged. So it's really hard for them to actually do this movement that is really easy for you. And myself, I had an accident as well um, about eight years ago that left me um, in de uh, dependent on other people and losing my mobility for quite some time. And that actually led me to creating my own startup then and being here on this stage in the end. As a kid, I was really passionate about science, engineering, medicine, and space. And I really wanted to pursue something in, the, in those regions uh, further down the line in my career. And so I had two paths that I wanted to go on. Uh, and that was medicine and engineering. And I decided to combine both and become a biomedical engineering scientist. And when um, going and doing different uh, jobs as a biomedical engineering scientist, and uh, I worked for some amazing, amazing organizations such as UNESCO. And while I was at UNESCO, I worked with great organizations um, such as different UN bodies and the World Health Organization. I was working on projects within science, technology, engineering, uh, to really in emerging economies and developing countries to really boost the um, science and technology and their econ the local economy with people um, in those countries. And I really learned a lot about how important it is to use the technologies that we have here to make an impact in emerging economies and help people um, live better lives and help uh, them um, achieve more, really. So when we look at the UN development goals, there are really some core areas that they focus on. Sustainability, healthcare, education, um, reducing inequality. And it, this is, it's really there where Tech for Good can make a difference because by using technology, we can really uh, help people. And when we look at emergency situations, such as when um, there is a crisis uh, within a city, for example, because of, or, or a country, because of whether it's a war zone or natural disasters, we need to be able to deploy emergency housing really quickly. And so by using one boat mechanical engineering structures and civil engineering to offer these structures to those people. But also if we can incorporate technologies such as solar cells to offer um, electricity to those tents, for example, we can actually offer those people a better way to survive in very, um, very hard crisis situations. Another uh, really important technology that has been developed for visually impaired people is a tool that really helps people um, with the um, identification of objects or um, when they're walking around the street, when they're shopping, they could pick up a box. The camera could identify for them what actually it is that they're picking up, which color of um, a sweater that they're holding and really help them live a more independent life that without Without it, they would really struggle more. The genome mapping has been a really great um, example of a collaborative effort that has been enabled by technology. And the open source initiative is, is really a great example of showing when people come together, when people share research and data, they can really achieve great things because it's only because of sharing the data that they could actually um, that they were actually able to map the genome to be able to uh, identify certain genes that are responsible for diseases uh, and help, help basically people get better quicker. So it's all about making an impact. And I'm sure you've all have uh, asked yourself the question, how can I make an impact? I really want to make an impact and speak up. How can I raise my voice to help people in need of, of, um, of tools to live a better lives? So how can you help? So tech needs more diverse insights. When we look on the left, we see a heart implant, uh, one of the first heart implants that were basically developed for male bodies, um, which means that in a lot of cases, they were not um, possible to insert them in female bodies just because of the different structure. Um, on the right, you see a, a water tap that we've all used. It's, it's uh, using sensors. But actually, a lot of the water taps um, in the past, they would only respond to white skin. So they had a racial bias. So darker skin, the water would not come out. 
period trackers. Um, I see lots of women in the audience. We all have, um, have to deal with it on a monthly basis. Well, period trackers are a great thing initially, you think, but actually a lot of them, they don't predict really well the cycles for women because also they, every woman is very individual, has a different cycle um, prediction-wise. There's very few of the period trackers out there that actually have the insights that they need to make trackers that are actually valuable for women. So women can really make a big difference there to even country, country, contribute more to make these products better. Um, facial recognition bias. Uh, just recently, a Google exec was talking about facial recognition bias because a lot of the systems that have been developed um, are trained using white male images. So when they, those facial recognition bias systems are identifying certain things, they have a bias because they've been trained using these white male images, basically. And then in healthcare, I'm deeply passionate about healthcare technology. But within healthcare, when you leave out half of the population to develop drugs, you really have a problem. Uh, before, a lot of the cardiovascular drugs, for example, were, des were developed uh, based on trials that were mainly um, having male subjects. Half of the population uh, is women. They, they struggle with cardiovascular diseases in equal amounts as men. But because they haven't been trialed on women, we don't really know how they respond, to, how women will respond to their drugs, for example. So we have a really big issue there. The gender gap that exists within medical research is getting better. We still need to improve and push to uh, include more women in studies to make sure that we cater for everyone. Um, so healthcare technology. Um, coming back to the example before of moving your thumb uh, and the stroke patients, we basically um, um, want to connect the brain again with the motor skills of patients. So how can we do that? And that's really where virtual reality comes in because this is one of our platforms where people have to move objects around, they do rotation movements, reaching, grabbing, we give them challenges, but they're training their upper limb. And because it's so immersive virtual reality, we can actually trick their brain into thinking that they're actually moving physical objects around. While in the virtual world, they're doing it obviously with virtual objects, but in the physical world, most of the patients, um, stroke patients, they really struggle just to hold this object. And um, as you can see on the right as well, it's a Paralympic, uh, athlete that I've worked with, and he was paralyzed from the waist time three times because of a spinal uh, tumor in his neck. And he used visual simulation constantly to get better uh, and to be able to walk again. And all three times that he was paralyzed from the waist time, he was walking again after eight weeks. So that was really incredible um, as a result. So VR has an, an incredible potential in helping people to get better. One, we can make it really, sorry, we can make it really fun and engaging. We can offer people um, a lot of different interactions with objects where in the physical world they cannot do it now. We can also reduce the waiting times for patients where currently some hospitals, they have waiting times up to nine months, which is a really big problem. Not only because we, we miss a big window of opportunity in helping people to get better, uh, but we also put a really heavy burden on their mental health so people really get depressed within that time. And then when they actually get transferred into a rehab facility, it's really hard to reverse that cycle and, and really help them get better again. So VR, it's an incredible um, kind of ecosystem that is, that is growing at the moment. It's a very new ecosystem. Uh, and we really have an opportunity there to make a difference because we can grow uh, a very inclusive, diverse and accessible environment, unlike the tech community today, which is still very much male dominated. And so I was part of a community of 20 women uh, some time ago that came together. We all work in virtual reality and we came together to write a vision statement for women and virtual reality around uh, the workforce, around representation of virtual reality in the media, around um, hiring people within, the, within a team to focus on hiring diverse teams, on creating content that is actually not offensive to women in, in any way or underrepresented groups. Um, and to really create a culture within these new companies, VR-led companies, that is actually diverse, inclusive and accessible for everyone that needs to be able to um, access it and work within the space. So um, we, we have a manifesto online. Uh, 
basically we ask companies that feel like pledging and following our, our vision for the future and hopefully create an environment that is really accessible and, and diverse and inclusive for people to get into this space. So how can you help? I would really urge you to challenge companies that you see that have a clear bias against women and underrepresented groups uh, to challenge them in some way, to speak up, whether it's through letters or through engaging with them in, in, in some way, uh, to make your voice heard and say that it's really not acceptable what, what those companies are doing. Uh, to also support uh, projects led by women and underrepresented groups that are leading amazing projects um, with, and trying to make a social impact. And it's really by supporting those uh, women and underrepresented groups that we can really grow the social impact community further and reach more people in the future to help and, and help them lead a better life as well. Uh, also, you can join companies and try to make a difference from the inside uh, by joining them and by helping to grow their diverse workforce going forward. And always remember to speak up whenever possible. So it's all about community and it's really tech for good and making an impact on society is really a collective effort. We have to come together as a society to help and make a difference on people's lives because it's only then that we will be able to reach all the people that we need to reach and help them lead a better life. Thank you.